Hey, what's going on guys? It's Jackson here from Titanic Games. Today we're going to continue on with our survival game series and in this tutorial we're going to take a bit of a step back and we're going to focus on implementing a little bit better design practices uh, for our code so that it'll be easier uh, for us to implement our kind of drag and drop operations and things like item swapping and you know using items from a hot bar, etc. Um, so let's go ahead and get started with that. So the first thing we're going to do is go into our UI folder here. I'm going to come into widgets and we're going to locate this widget inventory slot. So we'll open that up and we're just going to do a little bit of housekeeping right here. Let's go ahead and select all of this code and then hold control to deselect things. So we're going to deselect this event construct. And with all of this selected, we're going to right click on any of the nodes and say collapse to function. So this will collapse it into a smaller little packaged function so that we can call this functionality later on. Uh, and we're going to call this set style. So anytime we want to basically update a particular slot's uh, style, we can just call this function and it will update you know, the text uh, and the image um, accordingly, okay? Uh, or yeah, it'll update it based on the information contained within this inventory item uh, variable. Just move some things together. And look at that, it's looking really, really clean. I like it. Now we are gonna add one other variable here. And to do that, we're gonna create a new enum. So we're gonna come back out here to content, go into blueprints, enums, and we're gonna right click, go to blueprints, enumeration, and we'll call this e slot type. Now this enum is going to contain uh, a couple different options for kind of the slot that uh, we'll be having in a particular panel of our inventory or of our like you know inventory crafting slash hotbar slash equipment layout, right? Because it's all going to be on one screen at least in the way we're doing it. Um, so we're going to add a couple different options here. This first one. Uh, we'll call it inventory. So that'll be for any slots um, that are in the inventory panel. We'll have one called equipment. That'll be for anything in the equipment panel. We'll have hot bar for anything in the hot bar. Uh, we might as well add another for crafting. Um, oops. Make sure you name that correctly. And uh, I think I think that'll be okay. Um, we, we might come back and add one more uh, later on, but this will be good for now. So back in our widget inventory slot, we're gonna add that new variable. We'll call it slot type. We'll change its variable type here to E slot type. All right, and then if we just hit compile, we can verify that the default value is set to inventory. That's perfectly fine, that's what we want. And then we'll just check this little eye marker here so that it makes it editable. Okay, so that's really all we have to do in this uh, slot right now. Um, so we can close out of that. We'll come back into UI. And I guess kind of the purpose behind that is that we're gonna use this class to create any subsequent class or slot classes. So we will eventually create a hotbar slot, uh, a, an equipment slot, a crafting slot, and all of those will be based on this one. And this widget already has all the functionality that we need in it to be able to easily extend um, and make those other slots work. So back in UI, you're gonna, uh, if you recall, we set up this UI inventory panel in one of the previous tutorials. So now we're gonna create a new sort of, just a data uh, class for our user widgets, right? Any kind of widget blueprints uh, involving these panels, okay? So what we'll do is we'll right click, go to user interface, widget blueprint. Now this, we're not gonna call it UI underscore or widget underscore because it's not ever gonna be intended to be used specifically um, you know, visually in the viewport, okay? This is just gonna be a data class. So we'll just call this, uh, how about ICE panel base, okay? So we'll open this guy up. It keeps showing up on my other screen there, sorry about that. And all we're gonna do is just take this canvas panel and delete it so that all we have is just this ICE panel base, okay? What this allows us to do is um, in any other, in any classes that instantiate, you know, from this class or our children of this class, uh, we can still set up any hierarchy that we want, okay? So they can have different, you know, layouts of images, panels, buttons, etc., and everything will work out just fine. Now we'll come into the graph here and we're actually just going to delete this stuff right now. We don't need it. 
and we're going to add two functions. This first function, we'll just call it reconstruct. And this function is basically going to be called anytime we want to kind of flush out the entire panel and then, you know, rebuild it, I guess. So just can entirely reconstruct it, as it says. So in this, we're going to add one input. We're going to make its variable type survival character reference. Okay. And we'll just call this character. And then we're going to add an output of type boolean and we'll just call this like uh, or just we'll just say return value okay uh, and the reason that we're doing this is just so that uh, it's a little more intuitive when it comes to overriding these functions in any subsequent child classes um, I mean you don't technically have to do this but if we were to just create like uh, in a, a function without um, a return value then it would override it in the event graph as like an event instead of like a function. And uh, just to avoid confusion, we'll just, we're gonna set it up this way. So we'll add another function, and this one will be called initialize. And this one is just gonna have an output, just a kind of a dummy value. That's really all this is, just a dummy value called return value. Uh, in any of our subsequent classes so I figured we just put them all in this one you know base class here so that we don't have to kind of reinitialize them or you know recreate them in all of our other panels so this variable this first one we'll call it character ref and this will be a reference to our survival character it'll uh, this will just help it make it a lot easier for communicating between uh, our you know different blueprints that we'll have set up and we want to uh, Actually, we don't need to expose it uh, or you know make it editable. We'll add another variable, and this one we'll call slots. And this is going to be uh, of type widget inventory slot reference. Okay, so basically this is going to well, and we actually have to change this to an array. So we'll select this little box here and go to array. So we're going to have an array of these widget slots that get added into a certain panel. Okay, so each panel is going to have its own various amount uh, of slots. Um, so, and we'll use that in various ways. So now, uh, the last thing that we'll do in this base class is we'll come into reconstruct, and we're just going to do kind of some default functionality that we want all of our other classes to inherit. So what we want to do is take this character reference, drag out and say set, oops, we want to say set character ref. So we want to set our character reference based on whatever values pass through, okay? Um, and I guess, oh yeah. So then the last thing that we'll do is take our slots here. We're gonna drag out and we're gonna say clear. So that will clear this array of any references that we have. And then since we're clearing the array, uh, any all that memory that it takes up will get freed up because garbage collection will come through and clear it out. So um, yeah. And we'll just go ahead and say, you know, return true. Now, uh, we could add, I guess, like a little validation check here to make sure that this is valid before we set it, um, you know, so that we don't end up performing any operations without it uh, or like on an invalid reference. But um, the way we're going to have it set up, that, that shouldn't, you know, be a problem. Um, but if it is, we will come back and, you know, fix that. Uh, okay, so that's all we need to do for this data class. Now we'll come back into our inventory panel now. And what we're gonna do is just simply reparent this uh, so that it can now kind of use that new, um, you know, the new variables that it'll already have for it. Uh, and then we'll just kind of reset things up under that new setup, okay? So what we're gonna do is, well, first let's go to our reconstruct function here. And we're just gonna rename this so that there's no errors caused with it. So we're just gonna say like reconstruct um, blah 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 because it doesn't really matter we're gonna get rid of this so we're just gonna call it reconstruct blah 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 and now we'll go to file and say reparent blueprint and we're gonna reparent it to ICE panel base okay so you should now see that up here in parent class it says that your parent class is ICE panel base and that's great right that's what we want now what you'll notice is if you click this override drop down, you can see that we have these those two functions, initialize and reconstruct, that we can use now and override. So we'll go ahead and do that. 
but another thing that you'll notice is that character reference, right? Um, that variable is already being used. Um, and you can't see the variables right now because they're currently you know, hidden. If you say show inherited variables, you should be able to see those two, right? Character ref and slots. Um, so I guess we'll leave, we'll leave the inherited variables there so you can see them. Um, but it, you know, if you don't always need that on, you know, to be able to use them. Okay. Uh, so what we'll do next is, well, basically, you know, we're going to take everything that's in our initialize inventory function and we're going to move that into the overridden function. So let's go ahead and, um, we'll override the function first. So we'll say override initialize and you'll see that it already has a call to the parent function. Uh, so what that means is, or the parent classes function. And what that means is inside of IC panel base, if you call, you know, like the super uh, function, it will implement any of the, you know, functionality you had in that parent class uh, before doing any of the child class behavior. But we don't need that. So we're just going to hit delete. And instead, I'm just going to move this out of the way. Uh, instead, we're going to take everything in our initialize inventory function. We're going to go ahead and copy that. So control C, we'll come in here, just hit control V to paste it, slide everything over. And we will have to fix up a couple things. Okay. So for example, L index is no longer a variable. So we'll come down here to local variables, add a new one. We'll call this L underscore index, and we'll change this to type Oops, not float, we want integer. Hit compile there. Now we can take that, drag it out, say set, hook up the array index like so. Plug this stuff in. Okay. Now instead of uh, adding items, you know, adding the created widgets to this inventory slots, we're gonna add it to our default, you know, slots class. So we'll take our slots, we'll get it. And it should still be the same type, so we can still plug it in. If it isn't the same type, just drag off and say add, and then you can simply plug it in that way and reconnect everything. Sometimes uh, indexing or you know the things get messed up when you uh, sort of reparent things, so uh, just be aware that that could happen. Um, everything else here will be the same. We just need to re-add these index variables. So add that guy back in for the modulus there. Add this one in for that division. And there we go, everything else should be good. The last part is this character ref. We're gonna delete that temporarily and replace it with this character ref, which comes from our parent class. And just because I like to be organized, we're gonna add some reroute nodes. Gotta, gotta be organized, you know? Gotta make things easy on yourself. Okay. So we go ahead and hit compile there. And now we're gonna delete this initialize inventory function because we no longer need it. So just delete that guy. Now what we're gonna do is override the reconstruct function. So we'll say override. And since we already have some functionality in our parent uh, classes reconstruct function, we can actually just drag this, connect it in. And if we double click, it'll bring us you know, back to that uh, parent class and show us what it's doing. Right, so it's already performing part of the function, okay? So it's initializing our character reference and it's clearing out any uh, slot references that we have. So back in our inventory panel, all that remains to do here is to first take our inventory grid, get this, and we wanna clear the children from it. Okay, so if there's anything in our grid, right, any slots that have already been added, uh, you know, widget slots, I mean, uh, we wanna make sure that those are all wiped out. And then uh, the last thing that we'll do is we want to call that initialize function. So we can drag that in like so, or you could have dragged it off and say initialize. Okay, either one works. Just go ahead and do that. And then um, we can just plug the return values in like so. Uh, it really doesn't matter so much uh, what this return value is because we're not actually using it in any useful way. It's just a dummy value, okay? So we'll hit compile and save, and you see that there is an issue. Let's see, oh yeah, and that's just because, you know, we removed that function um, so it no longer exists, and that's fine because we're gonna delete all of that. So we'll delete it all, 
Now the last part that we need to do to make sure that everything's still working correctly is come into our ICE layout now. As you see, here's our inventory panel, just chilling out. Uh, let's actually just rename this. Let's call it um, UI inventory panel instead of that weird numbers it had with it. Come on, can I delete that? There we go. Okay, and then we'll go to our graph and you see that it's like, it's freaking out because it's like, ah, we don't have this function anymore. That's totally fine. Just delete it, take your inventory panel once more, and now we can call reconstruct, uh, which you know it comes from that ICE panel base, but since our inventory panel inherits from ICE panel base, we can just call that function on it. Plug in character reference like that, and that's all she wrote. So everything should still work out now just fine. So if we hit play, we can go pick up uh, one of our apples, and you see that the apple still shows up, okay? And all the other you know behavior is still working just fine, and that's great. Um, and our item stacking should still be working, perfect. So there we go. There's uh, the beginning of our um, you know better design practices. Uh, from this, what we'll be able to do is just pretty rapidly actually uh, expand upon it and create all the other panels like for the equipment for the hot bar. Um, and then subsequently do all like the drag and drop information. So uh, anyways, thank you guys for watching. I hope you like this video. If you like it, like or subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Oh, and one last thing I almost forgot. I just want to say thank you so much to all of our brand new uh, Patreons who have just been joining. Uh, Richard Moore, Rocky Baton, hopefully I pronounced your name right there, Daniel Sullivan, and Nathan. Really appreciate all that you guys have been doing. Um, and if you'd like to become a Patreon supporter today, go ahead, head on over to our Patreon. If you want to support us with our tutorials or in our game development, etc. Uh, so yeah, anyways, thanks again, guys, and have an awesome day.